just explain to me how the menu and how everything at Alinea has evolved since the original concept when you opened? I think that, you know, the core philosophy is still in place. Since day one, it was always about literally constant evolution. We weren't going to have signature dishes and we weren't going to become monotonous in our creative process. And I think the other thing is the personalities of, of the cooks. The food is kind of a given. Like by now, we've been open eight years. We, we're, we have a team in place now that is highly creative and highly competent with a great skill set. We can make delicious food. We can make interesting food. But outside of that plate, what can we do to change the way you feel when you eat at this restaurant? We're always trying to showcase each dish in its own light, not to just put it on the menu and say, this is a very tasty dish or this is a very good dish. But what are we doing with this dish? Why are we illuminating it? How do you sort of move forward and sort of stay consistent? We look at everything. I mean, it's yeah. nonstop. We basically, I mean, I'll sit there till four o'clock in the morning just looking at one random thing or I'll come talk with Chef Bagel on my way home, you know, and it's like 1.30 in the morning. He's still here. He's like, hey, I'm thinking about jackfruit. You know, go up to the Thai market, go pick up 20 pound piece of jackfruit. He'll juice it or he'll give it to me whole or whatever else. And then he'll work with something on it. Then I'll take it and be like, okay, well, here's some other ideas and we'll come together on it randomly. And then, you know. Last night we were, we were emailing each other at two in the morning about potatoes. Yeah. What about potatoes? <laughs> Just a specific variety yeah. that we wanted. But I, yeah, I think it, it really is. And is a lot of it ingredient driven? I mean, a lot of it is it will be, you taste no. something and you're like, I, we want to work with jackfruit, we want to work with potatoes. It, it really, it, it, that's the difference, I think, with us and a lot of restaurants. It's not entirely seasonal. It, it, it's this vortex of things colliding together. Mm. Seasonality, new techniques, new equipment new ways of producing uh, aroma or presenting a dish or the way that the aesthetics of the room evolves, the way that we move people through the room, like you might start dinner here for your first seven courses and then the captain might come up and say, chef would like to see you in the kitchen. And you're like, what the heck's going on? And they walk you down there and we chat with you, we give you a glass of champagne, you eat a course in the kitchen and then you think you're gonna come back up to this table but we'll move you in another room. And, you know, things like that, that change the experience. Last time we were in a menu meeting, you know, we said, what is winter? You know, and a lot of chefs, I think, would just go, oh, winter, root vegetables, potatoes, truffles. Yeah, everybody knows that. That's easy. That's the easy part. But what is winter? Well, winter is snow. Winter is the smell, the stillness. How do you capture that in the food, in the dining experience? So when we think of ingredients, we look at emotion as ingredient. How far in advance does that process begin? How far do you start saying, let's talk about winter, then how far in advance do you start experimenting? Do you start sort of making everything feel cohesive before you present a dish to a diner? I mean, I'm already thinking about next year, <laughs> and yet I still have a dish. I still have to put right. tomato on the menu today. Right. <laughs> so it, it it never ends is a better way to say it. Right. It's not so much that when does it start, it's, it's just that like it never ends. With next, we have a drop dead date where the entire restaurant flips, right. right? Here, if we so choose, we could do two dishes a week. There's some restaurants that say that they change their menu every day. Right. Well, what that means is they have lamb with morels and fava beans on Thursday, and on Friday they have lamb with morels and asparagus on Friday. That doesn't count in my book. <laughs> we literally sit down and, like you're saying, we look at we look at it from two angles. Right. We look at the particular dish, the one dish, and we we ask ourselves what that dish is trying to achieve in terms of either technique or seasonality or emotional triggers. And then we look at it, the menu in its entirety as a puzzle. How do they all fit together and how do they balance? When you are so rooted in continually evolving, where do you find those new inspirations? Again, everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Just yesterday in a meeting and we were talking about um, the availability of certain produce mm -hmm. and how it it's difficult at times and we wish we had a better resource and then we basically came to the conclusion that we just need to start a farm you know because and this is going to sound ridiculous but you look at how much money we spent 
on one vegetable purveyor alone right. annually. And it's over $350,000 just for one purveyor that we basically buy herbs from, right? And you're like, for $350,000, I can take out a $6 million mortgage on a farm right. half hour from here. And it's gonna pay for itself and then some. And we can customize everything that we grow and we can have things that nobody else will have. We basically proven that we, there are no limits. Who's to say that if we don't buy a farm 30 miles outside of the city that we, for a night, you know, those farm dinners are really popular. Why don't we create a linea in the middle of a field? You know, and, and again, that, that sounds like a farm to table movement and that would be part of it. But again, what if, what if on that farmland there was actual garden space, there was a meadow, and there was a forest, and you moved a group of 12 diners through that, and you know, it correlated with the food that they were having, and maybe there was music involved, and so that's kind of what we're thinking, and we, that, we can do that to a certain extent here, but we're limited because this is, this is our box, yeah. you know, and, and we can't really blow out walls or, you know, grow a garden in the middle of the room but who's to say that we can't take what we have here and put it out there or grow heirloom varieties that nobody's ever seen before and figure out how to manipulate them and treat them in the Alinea style. It, it's endless. Well, thank you so much You're welcome. for your time and for explaining your process. Really, really appreciate it. Awesome.